Snow Tracks is sponsored by Ski-Doo. What matters is what's next. Yamaha conquers snow. And by FXR Racing, full throttle addiction. Last season, Polaris introduced the Pro RMK 174 as the only competitor for Skidoo's Summit 174. And despite the fact that last season, Skidoo introduced the G4 platform across almost their entire Summit lineup, but chose to leave their 174 in the old XM chassis, we still thought a 174 shootout would be a good idea and something our viewers would appreciate. The results of that shootout were pretty clear. The Pro RMK made a better 174 inch mountain sled than the XM based Summit 174. However, nearly every area that the XM Summit fell behind the Pro RMK, we speculated a G4 based Summit 174 could potentially move ahead of it. But as always, we have to stick to our rules for a shootout and use only sleds that are available at the time of the shootout. In that case, it was the 174 XM based Summit. Now though, Skidoo has done exactly what we suspected they would do. For 2018, the longest Summit model you can get from Skidoo, or any other OE for that matter, is the new Summit G4 175. Today, we're gonna revisit our 174 shootout, but this time, we're gonna use Polaris's 2018 800 Pro RMK 174 and Skidoo's new 850 Summit X 175. To get started, let's look at last year's 174 inch shootout winner, the Pro RMK 174. Polaris's 800 clean fire mill really is an overachiever at altitude. It's got stellar bottom end, strong mid range, and pulls super hard up top. It produces power that easily spins the 174 by three inch Series 7 track in even the heaviest snow, which is all very good, but another trait this motor exhibits that we absolutely love is how fast it revs. Simply put, it's snappy and responsive, which makes it really fun and easy to ride. Polaris' 800 uses a semi-direct injection system that makes it start and idle smooth and run clean and crisp at any altitude. It also uses a precisely controlled electronic oil pump that helps with longevity and keeps oil consumption low. Polaris has always stood by their statement that a mountain sled works best when it's rigid. Their claim is that a rigid chassis more effectively transfers the rider's weight placement and movements into the snow, which in turn requires less energy from the rider and is therefore less tiring to ride. And we've found this to be true. A Polaris RMK is a very responsive chassis that leaves the rider feeling very connected to the sled. Combine this with its relatively low weight and you've got a sled that's extremely predictable and easy to control. Ergonomically, the consensus from our crew is that the RMK is darn close to perfect. The seat is small, but comfortable when you need to sit. The handlebars are just tall enough and just wide enough. They're also a great shape, and the additional bar end hooks feel better than a handlebar with curved ends, in our opinion. Maneuvering your body around this sled is easy, and we didn't once find anything we wanted to change or anything that got in our way. From a features standpoint, most mountain sleds are pretty sparse, the RMK included. On a Pro RMK 174, you'll get a basically non-existent windshield, a nice gauge package, Polaris's gripper skis, a small storage area in front of the gauge, and a small storage bag under the seat, and that's about it. The last area of the RMK that I think's worth mentioning is the suspension. Polaris's mountain skid does a great job of providing lift and offering excellent deep snow handling. A full set of adjustable remote reservoir and piggyback Walker Evans shocks gives you the ability to finely tune both the front and rear ends of the sled to work exactly how you want them to. On trail, the RMK's ride is harsh at best, but off trail, it rides great. For 2018, Skidoo's longest summit is all new, and I do mean all new. The G4 platform is not just a remake of the XM. It's a completely 100% new sled that shares only the rear suspension and a few minor components with its older counterpart. It also includes Skidoo's new 850 mil that's controlled by Generation 2 E-Tech Direct Injection technology, which is hands down the best engine control technology in the industry. The 850 starts like it's connected to your brain. Of course, it's a monster down low. It pulls super hard. It's got stout mid-range and good top end. All of this goodness is simply accentuated by the new P-Drive primary clutch that allows for instantaneous back shifts and near perfect clutch performance in all conditions at all throttle levels. 
The Gen 4 chassis is all new and it pushes the boundaries of snowmobile chassis layout even farther than the XM platform did. To call this one rider forward would be a little bit of an understatement. When the rider stands as far forward as possible, they are standing directly on top of or even slightly ahead of the drive axle. At first, this feels awkward and wrong, but once given a chance, you quickly adapt to it and it becomes more natural. The front end of the G4 addresses the most nagging issue we had with the older chassis, which was the weak bulkhead. The new setup is strong and durable, so there's no more worrying about bumping a tree or stump and bending your sled. We've talked about this many times before. T-Motion makes a Summit Mountain Sled incredibly easy to get on its side and keep on its side. Easier than any other sled on the snow, and we love it for that. But it comes with two drawbacks that need to be mentioned. First, it's not light. The Summit X175 is not the lightest sled in this shootout. With that said, T-Motion does mask its weight very well, and as an added bonus, it rides excellent on rough trails. The second downside to the T-Motion system is that it can actually be difficult to get the sled to turn downhill during a side hill maneuver. Once the sled is on its side, it really does want to stay there. Ergonomically, I'd say the Summit is great, but it isn't perfect. The seat is small and unobtrusive, and the handlebars are at an excellent height. However, they seem to be a little bit on the narrow side. When it comes to features, the Summit is equally as sparse as the RMK with one exception. A non-existent wind deflector does look cool. Nice gauge package, Pilot DS skis. One of the most notable items missing from this list is a set of adjustable shocks. Skidoo's X-Package Summit comes with preload-only adjustable shocks, and we think this is a mistake. On the other hand, the Summit X is available with the industry's most innovative piece of new technology this season, the Shot Electric Start System. Shot uses the stator as an electric motor to start the engine. Power comes from an ultra capacitor and is capable of starting the engine one to two times max before it needs to be recharged with another 20 seconds of runtime. That it only comes with a two pound weight penalty. Electric start that only weighs two pounds. It's an ingenious design. It works and we think it's a must have on any summit. Now that we better understand our two competitors, we need to figure out which of them is the best. And this isn't an easy undertaking. Last season's winner, the RMK174, is still an outstanding mountain sled, and everything we liked about that sled, everything that made it great last year, is equally as great this year. The Summit is completely different this year, and anything we didn't like about last year's model has been improved. So let's see how they compare. In the motor department, things are close. Both of these sleds make awesome power all through the RPM range, but from a complete power package perspective, the win has to go to the 850. It has just a bit more jam thanks to a slightly higher displacement. It runs smoother, cleaner, and more efficiently thanks to its outstanding E-Tech injection system and the P-Drive clutch allows the engine to run at its absolute peak at all times. From an overall chassis standpoint, which includes both the chassis and the ergonomics, both of these sleds are again excellent, but the win here definitely has to go to the Polaris. Ergonomically, it's the clear choice, but its rigid chassis is also light, tough, and makes for a nimble feeling sled. When it comes to handling, things get really difficult to decide. The Summit is easy to get and keep on its side, and it's not easily upset by changing snow conditions or rough sections underneath the snow. On the other hand, it can be difficult to get it to go down when you're carving a side hill. The RMK takes more effort to get and keep on its side, and it seems to be more easily upset by old tracks or hard patches in the snow, yet it's a little easier to get it to go where you want it to go. In this area, we're gonna pick the Skidoo as the winner. It requires less rider input and less effort and is therefore just generally an easier mountain sled to ride. In the suspension department, things again are difficult to decide. The Polaris has a way better shock package than the Skidoo, but the Skidoo actually rides better on rough trails. And so we have to decide what's more important, adjustability or ride quality. In the mountains, ride quality is much less important than having the ability to tune the sled's suspension to perform exactly how you want it to. So we're gonna give this one to the Polaris. If Skidoo would put a more adjustable set of shocks on their high-end sleds, it probably would've won here. Now let's look at features. Between the two sleds, the features are very much the same. Low windshields, minimal storage, and mountain skis. But the Skidoo offers something not just the Polaris, but no other sled in the industry offers electric start without a weight penalty. 
At first glance, this may not seem as exciting as we're making it out to be, but I promise you, one morning on the mountain and you'll be as impressed with shot as we are. This pushes the Skidoo ahead in the features category and gives it the category win here. The last area of comparison is more general, but is likely the most important category of all, overall rider experience. We really do like both of these sleds, and not just because they're the only 170 plus class sleds on the market. They are genuinely great mountain sleds to ride. They both have their own strong points when it comes to power, ergonomics, handling, and suspension. And they both have their own weak points as well. But at the end of the day, the sled that the majority of our crew agreed was the easiest and most fun to ride after all things are considered, the sled they would pick if they could pick either, was the Summit. Which gives it a total of four category wins out of six. The Polaris won two categories, and therefore the winner of this shootout is Skidoo's 2018 G4 Summit X 175. Trail Tech is sponsored by Princess Auto, a unique world of equipment, tools, and more. There's a lot of elements that help shape the sport of snowmobiling, but two of the most influential when it comes to performance are fuel and lubricants. The latter is what I want to talk to you about today and help you to better understand exactly what goes into a premium power sports oil. Ipone was founded in France in 1985 and since then has become a leading manufacturer of ultra high quality, performance focused oils targeted specifically at the power sports market. Since their inception, they recognized a need to bring high quality, premium blended oils to market where other companies were just rebranding cheap automotive oils directly to the power sports market. In today's marketplace, you need to have a great understanding of what makes a high quality, performance focused oil, because it truly is the sum of the parts that makes one oil better than the others. Ipone Snow Racing 4 Zero W40 Four Stroke Oil is an ester-based oil blend. Ester-based oils are of the purest and clean burning category, and the oil is chemically synthesized from organic acids and alcohol elements. In essence, it's man-made and not refined from petroleum or hydrocracked oil. This is important to understand because ester-based oils are superior to petroleum-based oils in many ways. Petroleum-based oils have a natural wax in their chemical makeup and they require the use of solvents to be added to the oil to keep the given viscosity at lower temperatures. If you didn't have the solvents, the wax would build up in your engine. Over time, your standard petroleum-based synthetic oil solvents will evaporate and your once 0W40 oil may change to a 5W30 or even a 10W20 and will also look as though the oil has reduced in your engine, though you don't see obvious signs of your engine burning oil like blue smoke. The end result is a much thicker oil with a much higher pour point that causes your four-stroke oil pump to work much harder and provides less protection at startup. The answer is Ipone, who pioneered ester-based oils in the power sports industry, and their 0W40 Snow 4 MotoGP tested oil will stay true to 0W40 characteristics throughout the entire life cycle of the oil. For you, that means your stubborn to start Yamaha sled or snow bike at minus 25 will not only start better with less effort, the oil pump will be able to pump more freely, allowing the important lubrication of the engine's internals. Especially notable is the polar attraction of ester-based oil to the metal. The oil molecules are actually attracted to the components such as the cylinder wall and piston skirt and are retained even over long periods of time where standard petroleum-based synthetics will be pulled by gravity to the lowest point and leave your engine with a non-lubricated cylinder wall. Now in two-stroke oil blends like Ipone's Snow Racing 2 with strawberry smell, ester blending is still very important. The Snow Racing 2 oil is very unique in its chemical makeup as it's able to be used in older snowmobiles requiring pre-mixed gasoline or in the newest and highest technology sleds like direct injection Skidoo E-Tec motors or Articat C-Tec 2 series of motors. It burns cleaner, doesn't leave hard and dry residue buildup on your power valves like conventional oils, and has no drawbacks being used in both old and new sleds. Plus, it smells like strawberries when burned. It's interesting to note that Ipone's been in North America for over 20 years. And back when Blair Morgan raced for Skidoo, his race mechanics demanded that they use Ipone racing oil. His results speak for themselves. So does oil really give you a performance advantage? Well, think about this. If a higher quality product that produces less friction internally, less carbon due to a superior molecular makeup, lower pour points consistently throughout the oil life cycle, and reduced effort from oil pumps allowing your motor to work more efficiently, does that not put power to the ground with less effort more efficiently? It sure does in my books. Ipone is in the business of producing super high quality synthetic oil blends as well as products for maintaining all of your power sports toys. And they don't just stop at oil. 
Their polished product is a wax-based dry cleaner that removes dirt and grime, restores color, and leaves a bright and glossy finish and does all of this without water. So when you're done, you just buff it dry and that's it. Likewise, the Plastic Shine is a silicone-based spray-on that restores the original finish of dull or hazy plastic from your belly pan to the side panels and hood, leaving them glossy and bright. And when it comes to cleaning and degreasing metal surfaces like brake calipers, clutch sheaves, or any steel surface requiring cleaning, the brake cleaner will do just that, offering 750 mils for the price of a competitive 400 mil bottle, as well as including the double action sprayer, allowing for wide bursts or the flip up straw precision. This is sure to be a staple in your shop. Proper maintenance of your Power Sports toys is crucial to the longevity as well as the performance benefits that I expect to get from those vehicles. So why wouldn't I choose a company that designs oil as well as maintenance products specifically for the Power Sports enthusiast that I am? Closed captioning of snow tracks is sponsored by Triton Trailers, built for adventure. Last season's Snow Tracks Real World Sled of the Year competition saw the closest battle in the history of the award. It ended up being a numerical tie between Skidoo's MXZX 850 and Polaris's Switchback Assault 800. Even though the Skidoo won the tiebreaker, the fact that the evaluation numbers were a tie proved one important thing. The Switchback Assault is one extremely impressive snowmobile and is still a favorite among many Snowtrax television staffers. This season, the Switchback Assault 800 is back and remains unchanged from last season, which is a very good thing. Because if there's one thing we've learned from observing this industry for the past two decades, it's that it's a good idea not to mess with success. So what makes the Assault so good, you might ask? Well, the first thing we need to look at is what a real crossover sled actually is. I've been pushing this point for years now. You can't simply throw a mountain skid inside a trail sled and call it a crossover. You also can't simply shorten up a mountain sled either. A crossover sled has to be a very specific combination of the two. It's actually defined by the sum of the two parts more so than the quantity of them individually. What I mean by this is that building a sled with parts that make it super capable off trail isn't the most important aspect of a crossover, nor is building a sled with parts that make it a great on trail sled. What's important is how those two sets of parts are combined and how the resulting vehicle performs both on and off the trail. The Switchback Assault is, in my opinion, the first crossover labeled sled to get this equation absolutely perfect. On the trail, it rides and handles great, it's comfortable, it's warm. Simply put, this is a great trail sled. But off the trail, it's extremely capable, can go anywhere and handles fantastic in the deep stuff. It is, again, a great off-trail sled. It's great at both individually. The next part of this equation is the easy part. It's no secret we feel the Polaris Axis is the best handling snowmobile in the business and it provides the best front end ride as well. So it only makes sense that using that very same front end on a crossover would result in a sled that handles great and rides great. And shocker, it does. This is because it's a full width trail front end with trail geometry designed to work great on the trail versus the narrower mountain or hybrid front ends that are commonly found on other hybrid models. Ride-wise, the Assault's front end is equally as excellent. To make a long story short, this is how you do a crossover front end, period. Now let's move on to the off-trail bit of this whole picture. What makes the Switchback Assault so good off the trail? This is where things get a bit more technical. Mountain skid frames are designed to work best in deep snow, and this always comes at the expense of ride quality. So when Polaris decided to build a crossover sled, they realized early on a mountain skid frame isn't going to work. On the other hand, neither will a longer trail skid. Something new is needed, and out of this necessity, the IGX 144 was born. The IGX skid frame is a cross between a trail skid that provides an excellent ride and a mountain skid that provides an increase in lift and flotation. On the trail, the IGX rides almost as good as a dedicated trail skid frame without hindering Polaris's awesome rider balance control we've come to love so much. But off the trail, it provides excellent flotation and lift, and when wrapped in the two inch track option, unbelievable traction. The final piece of the puzzle is ergonomics. A crossover sled has to be comfortable on the trail, but also can't hinder the rider when he decides to head out into the boondogs. 
Polaris' Axis platform offers a near-perfect ergonomic package for on-trail riding. Everyone who rides an Axis of any kind comes away raving about how comfortable it was and how it just seemed to fit them perfectly. But this might be the only area the Assault is forced to compromise. This handlebar riser is taller than what's found on a trail sled, but it is shorter than what you get when you buy an RMK. The seat is all trail, and while it doesn't necessarily get in your way when you're moving around the sled in the powder, it's definitely not as good as a dedicated RMK seat. Is the Assault the perfect snowmobile? If you're a dedicated trail rider, no. There are better trail-only sleds on the market, but if you have any desire or need to ride off-trail at some point, we honestly can't think of a better sled choice than the 2018 Switchback Assault 800. Snow Tracks has been sponsored by Polaris. See endless possibilities. MBRP Performance Exhaust. Race Inspired. Trail Proven. And by Art to Cat. Share our passion. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to see more content from Snowtracks TV, click the like button and subscribe to the Snowtracks TV YouTube channel.